So very good evening, Charan. Thank you so much for coming down. Charan is um, a founder of StuMax, an online portal or a hub for colleges and students. Uh, I'll let him tell more about that. So welcome, uh, Charan. Thanks, uh, Mamshi, for inviting uh, thank you. to your show. So first question is, what is StuMax? What can you tell us about StuMax? So as you rightly said, it's like portal, hub, all these are jargon. But to just make it clear to the viewers, Okay. Uh, Stu Max, uh, it started out as a digital campus ecosystem. Okay. So if you just see the name, it's just like Stu Max Student okay. Magazine. Okay. So the initial idea was to create a common platform for all uh, colleges or for all students on okay. one area, which where it acts like a cloud suit, where how you convert every college into a digital campus. So when you say digital campus, people had apprehensions that if you have Wi-Fi also, you call yourself as a digital campus. Yeah. There were days like that. Okay. So we thought, why can't we have everything in a college from an admission, from a digital magazine, digital event ticketing, a discussion board and opportunities dashboard for every college. But we added a something called Discover. It's more like a student discovery platform. Okay. You want to get recognized, you study in XYZ college also if you are talented. If your college is a digital campus powered by StuMax, you get recognized to the world. So from a student point of view, what am I going to join StuMax for? Most of the colleges today, let's say, the social network, we feel it has connected everyone. We both were on Facebook, but we didn't get connected didn't because get, of Facebook. Absolutely. So even in the college, the same situation is there today. Okay. Someone is talented, he might have 30 friends or 40 friends. Okay. So he's good at, let's say, writing. But his writing skills, his blog is not able to reach the other people. Okay. Every student has his ho her own profile okay. where they can start writing or they can get to know about others, students. So like an interactive It's like an intranet for, for... Right. But it's a kind of a dynamic platform, okay. a two-way communication platform. Uh, easy to sum up in one line, it is like an intranet for a college. So colleges don't have a website, that's it. They don't have an intranet mechanism. So we created this intranet mechanism. And you can share, um, you know, ideas. Right. We can share innovations. You can search for a co-founder. Okay. Put your innovation idea there. And some people, if they like that idea. They can copy it. They can copy it, fine. But at the end of the day, today you know it better as an entrepreneur. Sure. Even if someone copies our idea also. You have your own perspective. You have your own vision about it. Absolutely. And uh, where you want to take it from X to Y. Very interesting. How is that different from... You know, I've, I've studied in, um, you know, I went to Purdue right. when I, for my undergrad. There, there was something called Blackboard and all right. that. So you brought so, it right. Uh, let's say okay. there is something called Blackboard or Canvas okay. in US now. Yeah, yeah. So let's say it's too costly for Indian colleges to afford it first. Whatever features are there in Blackboard, we have five to ten more features now. Okay. So like, like assignment, submission, all these are part of premium features for college. Mostly it is for assignments, assignments and grades and right. very it's generic correct. stuff. So what we did, we added a lot of other features to the Blackboard LMS features, like a, a learning management system, you call it as LMS. Okay. So we added something called digital magazine. We added a kind of a chat messenger within a college. Oh, wow. Okay. So we added opportunities. So we wanted to build this close-knit system in the college. Apart from that, in Purdue, you used Blackboard, mm -hmm. but you were not able to contact someone from Harvard. Sure. So it was your own cocoon, but you wanted to network beyond Purdue also. Yes. Purdue's and all these are brands where they are like, let's say India, you have IITs here. Sure. So they are their modern day cocoons kind of stuff. You know, but the yeah. tier one, tier two colleges, the talent is scattered. And you want to get it on one platform. Right. So I always say very funnily, nothing against IITs or something like that, but we have a, a village called Kompali outside Hyderabad. Yeah. The number of students in Kompali is more than the number of students in all IITs in India. If you see, if so you just see the quantity. <laughs> So the whole point is, yeah. but there are a lot of talented students sure. and they don't have a recognition as such sure. and they get lost in the volumes. Okay. So how we can identify, make them discover using the platform is one. Okay. And second thing, let's say a lot of people have a pride sure. in IITs or Purdue. Let's say no, sure. you said, I studied in Purdue. So that's a pride factor. <laughs> Maybe or may not, that's, I'll not get into that debate, but a lot of people have this habit of keeping an IIT, IM venture under yeah. their line or yeah. something. I've seen a lot of that and I've actually argued a lot with IITians. <laughs> I had the bad debate sometimes, you know, uh, like I should who? mention one of our common friend Prem also. In okay, it. okay. You know, I had once a debate about him. Like there was a kindergarten daycare. Okay. That guy wrote as like an IIT, IIM venture, kindergarten. 
So I said, what difference it does make? They said it's a quality stamp. Quality stamp. Or a nice leadership team. So you wanted to put it to good use, obviously. Right. What was the like you know burning factor for you to start something like that? We call it as India is a big country, it's a youth country, and yeah. the population is less. You know, the youngest country in the world after China. Demographic wise. Yes. Demographic wise, and after 2020, we'll be the youngest country in the world. World. So, but when people say this is the biggest consumer segment or customer segment. Yeah. So I see from a bigger picture because being an entrepreneur, you know, it's about the target audience. Of course. And how you create an influence. So we need a funnel. So we need new funnels to reach out to people in the digital world more targeted. Wow. So I was thinking like, why can't a student is the first person who is a youth, is a person who influences a lot of purchasing decisions at home. Of course. So we wanted to have a focused channel target. So to identify that the captives are colleges first. Okay. So every student is in a college. Okay. So in future, so there's a vision of Stumax is about how you create a focused advertising channel for student in a very focused manner. We don't use banner ads on Stumax. As of now. In future too. In future. Because I don't okay. believe in it. I believe in blocking ads. Okay. So we don't believe in that. Unknowingly, you I click have an ad blocker. So I, so I think, everyone does. I think everybody who has sends an But I think some some people like seeing uh, those it's random it's ads. Like, now here, uh, more than ads, I was looking like I'll give two to two to three use cases for you. Okay. So what we did with Stumax in the past, so that you can relate. They take most of the information from you for that. Right. And sometimes the whole workshop thing, where you end up like clueless. Yeah. So, but most of the students, uh, if you because you studied back in United States, you know that you are so used to working while studying. Of course. So that keeps you busy first. Yeah. So that your mind is, your mind is occupied. It's not that you are not able to afford bull mm -hmm. you, you want to just your be mind busy. engaged. Yeah. So, but the same thing here. If you see today's world here, let's say we we are millennials now. This generation Z. Gen Z. Gen Z or yeah. whatever jargon they use. I wanted them to keep them busy. So three here we have an opportunity step. We started putting free time jobs. Okay. On Stumax. So let's say you want to onboard merchants. Why you need to hire people? So why can't you give? Why, if you want to do a survey, why can't you hire students? So that's how one of the revenue models that which wow, we created. I should say trying to. You're offering a very interesting model to Monster.com as well. Monsters, Naukris and stuff are, have become like just dials now. Yeah, that's so, true. So it's like they're repositories. We don't know the kind of data. Today, it's, it's more about the dynamic data that which we look at. Today, people want the opportunity to, to come to them. Yeah. You don't want to go and search for an opportunity. Yeah. So when I was in college, there was something called intern fevers and stuff. Okay. So people used to go and search for internships there. Now, on Stumax, every student has his own skill verified profile. This is the thing which I want to talk about. Oh, wow. Okay. So let's say LinkedIn has become market uh, Vamshi now yeah. for students. Let's say you, know, I, you write a okay. testimonial for me, I write a testimonial yeah. for you. So that's not the case today. So what we said, if you want to add Java to your uh, skill profile, you have to clear a test on AI engine. So we, our future goal is like we want to become a fresh pool place or a targeted advertising plus hiring space. So we want to come back and we are trying to tell students you have profiles. Tomorrow you post a you know, Java opportunity, it goes to Java. If you post a marketing, it goes to people who are interested in marketing. Wow. And tells you a track record about how he worked with other brands in the past as an intern also. As a nation. Um, we need to set in that proper culture Correct. building right from the school days. I think using such platforms like StuMax also is a beautiful platform to first educate people. You know, the and, and innocent mind. Today, the, oh, the biggest problem uh, we encounter in social networks yeah. is about the fake data yeah. and the fake news. Absolutely. So today, StuMax is a controlled data platform and it is targeting to the most uh, vulnerable crowd called youth. Yeah, absolutely. So, and here, this is a curated platform. Any data doesn't get published unless it is approved by, it's a federal mechanism. Every college has its own admins. And even someone approves some shitty content, we know who approved it. We can track so can it, pin, pin we can down. report it, and we can pin down and pull that plug. So, tomorrow, as you rightly said, this demography has to be nurtured, yeah. has to be guided properly, yeah. and has to be shown the path, that the future path. Of course. So, what's the next step? They need to be given the right content about the career path. Are you interested in politics? Not anytime soon. But, but maybe in the future? Maybe happy to be a kingmaker rather than a king. That's always a better thing. So I was talking to some people, mm -hmm. right? And uh, they were around our age. And mm -hmm. one of the thoughts they, that they came up with was, are you looking at politics? Mm -hmm. uh, when you're looking at doing green initiatives, when you right. talk about having a positive effect right. for a larger good, whatever. Right. Are you looking at politics? It's like, no, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Not at this stage, at least. Right. That's the problem, right? 
like young people like ourselves who are maybe interested in you know no, I, I just define it in my own way like yeah. now let's say if you see stumax there's a lot of red color into it when i was a rebel till 21 okay. i always say you know be a communist till 21 be a capitalist till 40 okay. after 40 be a philanthropist so it's why you know, we need to have our own life live it yeah. in a king size kind of stuff yeah. so maybe once we turn 40 yeah. we might look at politics cannot disagree with you more i mean i totally we need to have agree. that good thing you know, and, yeah. and again if we are not committed into something yeah. let's not do it but on the contrary and this does make sense um, if young people like us do not try to make changes at the very right. beginning right like so so politics today is still governed by majority of the older generation right. not not very few like Changing, you can hand pick no? right. hand pick the few of Correct. the younger crowd maybe under right. 35 even right. uh, isn't it better for young people like let's say you or your your type of thinking uh, see the the idea is today if you see the politics from a larger point of view it's yeah. it, it's not just the one way thing it's a sure. two way kind of a thing sure. so you know a lot of people say why movies are bad they say society is bad we reflect it the same thing with the politics too yeah. you know people say like you know even if someone wants to do greater job yeah the time is so short mm. the sustainability let's say in, in again they are tested again the next 5 years itself they are tested yeah so again, they just get back into the testing mode. Sure. So it's it's a bit kind of a whirlpool that they are in. They can't come out of it. Yeah, yeah. But they yeah, are just stuck. Absolutely. They are yeah. just a bit stuck. Yeah. So my own perspective is, it's about how you gel both, yeah. how you try to create a, a service, and create more employment. Create a first, good base. Create a proper base. Create young leaders first. I, let me just tell you right now. Like I, I know we've been talking. Huh. Uh, previously also right, I and mean, right. I know what Stumax right. uh, I, I think I had a faint idea of what Stumax Correct. does but the way you explained to me just now I think the potential is insane I think. So actually the whole point when we started off it was yeah. very tough for us so yeah. we were compared that Facebook Haina yeah. we, we people used to come most of them what happens is like it's a human tendency that you understand what you know and you resist change you understand what you know itself you yeah. have your own benchmarks in your mind yeah. and uh, India has a one big issue. It's not about complaining thing, but we love global CEOs, not global products out of India. We, we, are, we are in so off people. Let's say now you are a CEO or whatever designation yeah. you have it. Yeah. So we are in so off people. We give more importance to people rather than the process. And rather in, than the process, rather than the product. Product or process. And, and from where it comes. Now you're building great job, doing a great job for Atom now. Let's say now Atom comes from China or US, yeah. the whole perception would have been different. Absolutely, the value would be tenfold. They, they say, you know, you're manufacturing it in Telangana? No, man, it, it might yeah. be, the quality might be bad or whatever it is. Yeah. So people have presumptions a lot. So it's like sometimes I feel I should go out and come again. You know, sometimes we have to say that you know, it is not manufactured here. Yeah. So it's all like I was buying uh, in Dallas. I was buying a Ralph Lauren shirt, and they, it said like made in Bangladesh. Yeah. You, know, you feel so bad. So some, sometimes you know you it's go like that when you come up with products in India. That's the impression which we wanted to change, and we have to have a better investor ecosystem. That's where I feel like we have too many mentors in Hyderabad and less of right investors. So people people who look at long term, yeah. a long term vision. Yeah. Let's say now 1 million student base. Now I'm searching for investors. I'm in discussions with okay. different people now. Okay. So the biggest problem that I face is like people say like, why can't you charge students hmm. for login? Yeah. They wanted immediate transaction. So our guys think like a Kirana store, not like a supermarket. So point so is... It's a short game. Short game. And short games don't last long. Yeah. And global products are not built on a short game. Like you see any global product... Gestation period. So if someone asks, how does Ola make money? Yeah. Normal man doesn't know. How does Swiggy make money? Normal man doesn't know. But most how does of them, Facebook make money? Yeah. Normal man doesn't know. So anything, if someone doesn't understand how the business is making money, yeah. makes more money. That's true. Actually, you know, you should, sometimes the revenue model yeah. should be so obsolete. Yeah. So that's what I talk. Sometimes I feel like I was in US for Shark Tank boot camp. Okay. So you know, I, we were one of the five startups who got selected for a boot camp there. Okay. So I met uh, Mr. Wonderful, Kevin Harrington. Oh wow. So it was a great experience. Mark Cuban. Uh, so Mark Cuban. The, the, you know, the kind of attitude that yeah. they have yeah. or the whole perspective, you know, the valuation thing also here. So, people so tell me about Shark Tank. What did you do actually? So what? we went to the boot camp part. Okay. So it's like, you know, five Indian startups got selected there. Okay. We had a full sponsor trip to uh, New York and we were put in a resort for two days. Okay. So it was like, you know, the pitching exercises, the validation. How you know it helped me to open my horizons, you yeah, know, bigger I'm way. Sure. The way you talk. Like, let's say we you know let's say I meet you now. I see you as Vamshi. Okay. 
a lot of people see you as managing director yeah, kama atom depending on the so that's that's the difference between yeah. a western outlook yeah. and an indian outlook yeah. there people respect people yeah. here we respect the seat we respect yeah. the position sure, sure. so when we see people as normal people people like it yeah so let's say you studied there you came back and you understand like you want to be treated normal first absolutely investor game to here people when you go to investors there's not a kind of a cribbing or something like that sure sure i mean but the you whole went change, through the cycle so that's so the experience so it's like the change that which we need to bring yeah. in is like when someone asks for investment the person is not begging there yeah the person is asking for a partner that i will work for your money is just sharing the cake so we hope yeah. hope uh, let's a bangalore represents the right image So let's say Bangalore is okay. doing a great job because it has few investors from the valley. So okay. hope we are also changing. We are also like we have a great leaders now who are leading us. Maybe I see a. I'm expecting a great metamorphosis in the next five years too. Okay. So how we evolve as a better ecosystem when we have right investors. Okay. Betting on the idea, trusting people. That's how you have global products come out of India. That's true. But maybe uh, some of the startups in from Hyderabad have had issues, right, in terms of credibility. So in yeah. terms of playing out like what what is your so, take on see, that see the point is like you know there are cases everywhere yeah. it depends on where you see the dot or the whole white board sure, so sure. There, you can't generalize it okay. let's say someone have fox you it doesn't mean that everyone does yeah, that yeah. and i know the others are facing the brand, yeah, brand because of because the others so it's like we need to understand the bigger picture there yeah. and i always say till a series a i always feel it's about investing in the person Yeah. It's not about investing in the idea or yeah. else. it's like the idea and the person and the scope for the whole thing. So if you go and have too many calculations, you end up nowhere. So it's like you know if yeah. you just like let's if you talk about solar market itself. Yeah. Yeah. Four years back it was very cocoon. Now it is opened up like anything. Oh, oh it's went overboard. Went overboard. Yeah. We need that X factor. Uh, maybe I was thinking in future. Maybe when I take an exit or someday. I want want to start a venture capital fund with all the young entrepreneurs like us with the right mind and oh man uh, no, because we need to encourage student entrepreneurship i feel the biggest risk taking capacity is from that level i feel the next gen it's all about making your money work rather than you work absolutely so it's about it's like gone other days there's a saturation level in every business yeah now. reinvent reinvent and, and the yoys reinvent. and moms don't work yeah. now like if you want to show the growth it's very tough i growth. come from a manufacturing background right. i i can like I sometimes get frustrated with the whole process because in our industries it's mostly right the whole bio bio mom because right. unfortunately it is too much is dependent on the market right and so the external factors in external factor, factor and too too less is no i feel like entrepreneurs like you should invest in students yeah. invest like it's not that i'm trying to do hard selling here sure, sure, but when you invest in student ideas and stuff yeah. what happens is like we stay young Yeah. So the idea is like someone was commenting like you are lucky you know you're going in colleges every other day you feel 21. So you know that's the whole part of it because uh, we once we become adults we start thinking in a more matured manner. We, we have a fake cocoon and yeah. stuff we we smile in the way fake stuff we we don't open up well. Yeah. And childlike thoughts are always good not childish. Absolutely. But it's like when you have the childlike enthusiasm uh, the kind of thought they don't they lack business expertise they have good crazy ideas. We scrap it. before converting them into a product absolutely they convert it so they actually need a good mentor they need a good mentor to guide them rather than right this is the their... hook wala factor yeah. you know how we it's not about capitalizing uh, but when we give a smaller capitals to them and then make them work Look and them out of 5 to 10 maybe two will two will work and the two will create employment more so what kind of hardships did you face like i'm sure every how many like you know but it was like very funny in the initial days you know when you come from a decent family you start feeling like okay most of the success stories you read yeah. you go through enough hardships and you start worrying there are no hardships so you start feeling that you need hardships yeah so, but later you understand hardships are different for different people so i, I keep on uh, i told in one of my talks in the past like you know one day my dad said you know successful people studied under the street light and you listen from our father of the kind of tough struggles that they went through i can't through. go study under the street light now just and because even then, when you go and study under street light your father says that there is light at home yeah so I, again you feel like the hardships are different for different people for us it was very unique concept when we because it's a kind of a platform play a chicken egg problem it's like you know you have traction then you don't have clients hmm. clients ask for traction hmm. so it's like you know for, to get clients first you need funds yeah so it's it's like a kind of a chicken egg stuff yeah. where we try to figure it out okay. uh, the other hardship was to find or knit a close knit team 
Okay. So the first thing yeah, which tell me about yeah. team building. Like I'm sure. So I uh, I have a co-founder who is a designer. Okay. So Freddie and uh, he was running. I've a met Freddie also. Yeah. yeah. He's almost like three to four years younger to us. Okay. So he used to run a print magazine in Vizag. Okay. And was doing profitable mag college magazine in print with a perforated sheet for with coupons. Okay. And ads in it, in wow. colleges. And he, he didn't have his own press or anything like that, but that guy was doing a great job there. So I got so in, inspired and has a design taste and he was talking about design. Then I said, why can't you join? I pulled another guy, Kalyan from IIIT. Okay. So I believe uh, a quality team, it's not about just forming a friends group. Yeah. It's about everyone should bring something to the table. Today I feel like if you have a nice bunch of people, we can do wonders. Tell me about your New Zealand experience. How was that? It was great. Going actually. and competing with international portals. Uh, we were competing with Canvas with uh, when we were targeting a university there. Okay. So, again, the same old thing. We have we found a reseller there. So because that's how it works. We okay. need to find resellers for the product. So found a college friend who is uh, doing a decent job in New Zealand. Then uh, they they started respecting the product. Now we are like the whole part of the pricing part of it. We can afford it. We can give it at a cheaper cost because our manufacturing costs are cheaper, cheaper. back in India. Yeah. If the IT costs are also cheaper, I'm telling to my potential investors also because we can build it at cheaper cost, okay. and we have nice margins when we go start selling. It's all about the right path with which we have to choose, and right people we have to target, Very and nice. right team. So when you have a right leadership team, because I always believe the middle level leadership should not be too big. Okay. So that we have more vital elephants in the team. Yeah. So we need to have a nice leadership team in place. Effective leadership. Heads, effective guys. More leadership. More I mean. leadership. Yeah. You know, we need to have qualitative, not at a quantitative. Yeah, absolutely. And then things work. And it, it's great. Uh, now we are looking at recently uh, one of the startups got selected. We are one of the 10 to 15 startups by India who went to Slush okay. uh, in Finland. Okay. So Freddie represented us in Finland. It was a great experience. And we are looking for more global platforms uh, in the near future too. How do you get into that global space actually? From like you know a startup from Nagol, right. uh, from Hyderabad. Right. Now I finally said when I was in New York, it was a journey from Nagol to New York. Yeah. So new Nagol to new New York, <laughs> so something like that. So it, it was very. Uh, see, the whole point uh, is like building a global campus ecosystem. Okay. I'm just giving an example sure, here. Sure. So now we create a funnel around the world. So a lot of people can use this funnel to go around. Yeah. So it's about visibility part of it. Sure. And how we go, uh, like the most of the foreign universities see India as prospective clients. So in India, most of the, when they want to go to foreign universities, they go to people, consultants to make their profiles. It's a very unfortunate thing, by the way. Can't totally help it. Like, despise it. The statement of purpose is someone yeah. else's purpose. So the point here, you can directly connect to universities. Yeah. So I'm telling, pitching to foreign universities now, you be on Stumax. So you are visible, your activities are visible to students from the day one. Yeah. So he makes a decision, a conscious, conscious decision and there's a button we try to create now, apply for admission directly to the foreign university through Stumax. So that's how we want to create. And this is at 11th and 12th grade? Uh, no, no, I'm talking about the post-grad thing. Post-grad. So, yeah. so you can actually do it for 11th and 12th. And 12th uh, in India, the ecosystem is not that developed as it should be because let's say one problem, uh, recently uh, Narayana took our service. Okay. So Narayana took a white labeled version of Stumax for 256 schools. Okay. So Very what nice. happens in schools is like we have this discover option of following other schools. Okay. In college it's okay, there is no attrition. Schools are like cocoons. They want a scandal on product okay. of Stumax. Okay. That's where the problem is coming. Like they don't want them to expose to other activities in other schools and stuff. Colleges are okay. They don't change colleges, right? What I was trying to get at is if you attack the students in 11th and 12th mm -hmm. for other colleges. Yeah, see, that's growing market, let's say, but it's, it's still niche in India. Okay. Like, like, let's say, how many people are going at 12th standard yeah. is very less. No, after 12th, huh. for undergrad, most students try to apply and go, right? Uh, undergrad, it's a bit less. Not all, uh, as much as actually, postgrad, okay. postgrad in India, okay. uh, 60,000 students go every year. Undergrad is hardly less than 10,000. Okay, fine. So the, uh, we in future we fine. might expand to K12. I mean, it's not, not a big deal once you right. make this a success. Our systems yeah. here, like you know, there are few players who rule the market in 11th and 12th. Yeah. It, it's a top-down approach. If we target one, it's easier to penetrate into two lakh students at a go. That's why I got out of uh, <laughs> high school. I didn't do high school here. I, I went to Singapore. Oh, okay, plus one, do, plus two. Yeah. Oh, okay. So even statement of purpose and all. When I came back right. randomly. And uh, I found out that people outsource all of that. Right. I was extremely zapped. I was like, so you you don't write your statement of purpose. Right. They're like, no, I don't. 
I, I, I pay someone and then they just do everything for me and they upload it. I think. That's the problem. Like, you know, we need to identify the demography there. So tell me about your international experience. I'm very curious. I, I was going through your profile right. before you had come. You did Inc. talks, you did TED talks, you, uh, you've represented... Uh, it's like last one year has been very eventful. Okay. Uh, so we got uh, recognized by Forbes as 30 under 30. Yeah, and that so too. I, I uh, that to helped as that. a validation factor. Congratulations uh, on that. First thank you. I, I think the next list will be out very soon. So <laughs> I'll be like an ex-alum for <laughs> it. Uh, but uh, yeah. 2018 has been a great year for us. Okay. We have been in the fag end of the 2018. Okay. And this year, uh, because we were in a stealth mode before developing the product, and then... Uh, when did you start, by the way? 2015 and 15, yeah. Three years. It's been three years now. Done great progress. So, this year has been a kind of a phenomenal, it's almost like that hockey stick growth. Okay. You always have that hockey stick wala phase, like where you go through the whole curve and suddenly you take a spike. Okay. And this year, uh, the whole attention or the PR attention uh, was on us. Uh, different ways, like uh, I feel that's one of the traction methods that which we used. Okay. And it worked out well for us. And uh, Forbes uh, thing, it's more about inbound inquiries that you get. Very nice. So you keep doing the same work before recognition and after recognition. So so make sure that that keeps going. The on. whole thing which changes is the inbound inquiries that you get. Yeah. So and the other TED talks, the TEDx talks, or the Ink talks, and all those things are uh, stage time for me. Okay. You know, it's like you know one guy in the audience if he feels inspired. Yeah. Maybe or if one guy in the audience feels that I'm investable, yeah. if one guy feels like fine, it's worth enough to spend some time. If, if anybody else can use your right, the whole funnel part this. of it, or any even one person in the audience gets motivated because of that. Yeah. So I always funnily say it's all about if I can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah. Or add that ordinary and extra together. So it's all about adding that extra to the ordinary life. I'm always curious about how a startup can really take it from a startup base to take it larger than life. The right? word play itself, yeah. uh, let's say when we were in college in 2009 and 10, I think because you were in Purdue, you might, then have, I graduated. You might have heard, yeah, 10. Yeah. 10 is the year when we both yeah. were like graduated. Like yeah. Startup was the early word. Yeah. It was not the word for us. Yeah. Let's say in 9 and 10, we, we are like Orkut users yeah. Yeah. in those days in 9s and 10s. Uh, yeah. Facebook was in the Facebook, early stage. I think 6. Seven six was the was seven, then, yeah, six was six, Facebook seven, founded, yeah. the Facebook was there. Yeah, yeah. Then it became six, Harvard seven, Social. I think we, right. like we started getting so one. Yeah. The startup uh, is more like a thought process rather than an entity. I look at startup as a thought process more. Okay. So, you know, I always say, uh, think like a startup, work like an MNC. Yeah. So, it's like, you know, most of the time people say like, you know, someone said Mark Zuckerberg wears one dress every day. Yeah. And you start wearing one dress, it doesn't make you a startup founder, right? So it's like, you know, people say, don't, don't you have enough clothes? That's, of that's the second co of common people say. Or fashion sense. Or fashion sense. Yeah. The second thing people say, like open offices work yeah. and they keep hacker tables. Yeah. And it might suit Facebook, but it might not suit your office, right? Absolutely. So we need to understand it's not about replicating or copying a startup. So it's not working like a startup, but thinking like a startup, how agile mm -hmm. you are. So I see startups, why most of the startups fail? Because they still work like a startup. Yeah. So it's about thinking like a startup and scaling like an MNC okay. is what I say. The scale is more important. Very Today you see the companies, it's about like, let's say you see all the marquee unicorns in India and you last one month has been a great month hmm. where you start a, and sometimes as a entrepreneur, you listen to those billion dollar fundings and you start getting those stocks. Yeah. You know how these guys are cracking this big time because we have such a big opportunity in India and we are searching elsewhere. Yeah. So the such opportunity is the data and the, the population that which we have in India. Yeah. And yeah. let's say me, when I'm talking to all the potential guys now, I'm telling like 70% in 2020, half a billion people. Hmm. So that, that is half a billion people will be under 35. Just That's imagine cool. that, that kind of demography where we want to reach out to the tier 2, tier 3. The whole game is about to reach out to tier 2, tier 3 now. Absolutely. And the first people who adopt in tier 2, tier 3, will be students because the, the how the, they get great influences and how can you frame their mind how that's the reason they're getting out it's all about how we scale fast so startups need to scale very fast or fail fast so that you are not at the loss there's no point being there at the same place oh, for a very it, long it time it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense because it's like it's better if you do a job you get paid more net at the end of the day, because it, it, removing the capital gains any day. Yeah. So it's like you, you get paid more when you keep on advising few guys. Yeah. So it's like, you know, as a young uh, startup founder, I'm keep on working with a lot of other founders. 
That's what I'm saying. Like, let's help each other. And and even the thoughts, right? Right. Like explorative thoughts. The like premier that. organizations like EOS yeah. and uh, such organizations, most of the startups don't get access to. So why can't we form our own small EOS, Absolutely. kind of an extended board, Absolutely. and young, uh, maybe a 30 to 40, or that group, or 25 to 40, kind of a young group. So how, how can we interact more, meet more, and maybe... Idea this, generation, this, right? This, I use this VAMcast as an opportunity also. It's kind of an expression. Absolutely. So let's say I was not that open with a lot of people because there were a lot of stereotype stuff. Okay. So here I'm just <laughs> talking and opening up as a, you know, we, are, we both are good friends and Absolutely. we are chatting with each other. Yes. So when we have such a EO kind of a small groups mm. among ourselves and there should be a situation where everyone is filthy rich that there's no one asked a loan from other person. That's the ideal situation, and right? At least in the initial days when we start investing in each other. Yeah. It's not just money, it's, it's more than money, sometimes time is more valuable. Relationships and thoughts, right? That Ultimately. adds up, sometimes it depends on some stage. If someone gets an exit, he invests in other startups. Yeah. That's how Bangalore ma uh, Flipkart Mafia grew. So let's say now Eat Fit. Well, can you tell me about that? I don't know about that. Let's say Cure Fit. Okay. If you see the Cure Fit. Ah, yeah. Mukesh Bansal was part of Mentra. Mentra was bought by Flipkart. And now, let's say they, after two years, they came out and Someone got a seed fund of 15 million. So that's what happens when founders invest in other founders and that's how the whole ecosystem. It just spreads out. Everybody is richer at the end of the day and the wealth is created. So the whole point is about not money, it's about wealth. Yeah, so like the famous saying, right? Collaborate, not compete. Yes, see, it, that, that's how it works. And today, the 2.0 or the 4.0s, where we are talking about, it's all about the collaborative effort. Yeah. It's about how the whole thing goes how in a circle. How we are spreading with the and, and, and it's a circular economy also, Amshi. So, you know, it, it, what goes back comes back. Comes back. So, it's like, you know, the, the, how we have that thing and how we build that ecosystem, not an ecosystem. Ecosystem. So, it's, so yeah. it's like a lot of ecosystem, we have to remove G with C. What are you doing uh, with Danzo? I mean, so talking about see, collaboration. So, the most of the collaborations that what we do now with startups or unicorns or the whatever it is. Okay. So, we help them to find uh, users okay. through students, the campus ambassadors or get right resources for them, okay. the fresh resources and the task-based competitions and stuff, the brand visibility part of it, Very we just nice. help them into the get into the colleges. Very nice. So maybe like they want to do some activations, okay. we help them with students. We create a bespoke campaign. I know a lot of like coming from a manufacturing right. you know, background, I know a lot many companies try to build brands and uh, keep sponsoring college events, right? Just sponsoring for the heck of sponsoring. Yeah. Where, where if you say just like you get visibility, gone are the days of brand visibility now. Okay. It's more about conversion factor. Yeah. So it's like, unless you are a new brand and you want the name to go out. Just to be seen. Just to be seen first, the eyeballs thing. But it's more about conversion factor now. Yeah. It's like, I just don't need eyeballs. Let's say, you know, we were doing something uh, long time back with uh, one day with some uh, thick shake brand. Okay. So they just they just said you know just put our logo everywhere. Then I said it doesn't work. Have a perforated coupons with a serial okay. number so you, you know can... understand how many people come back to you. Yeah. So they were shocked. Then they felt like wow you know a lot of people came back. So you you understand the ROI part of it. Yeah. So now let's say most of them today in marketing also it's very tough to calculate ROIs. Absolutely. And slowly people are shying away from budgets. It's not like okay fine March is coming I need to sponsor. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. most of them sponsor in Jan, Feb and March. So that's how it works to... Uh, at I'm going through that actually. Right. I'm trying to build a brand of VNX or Atom, whatever it right. is. Right. It's very hard to so pin now down we, that. So we, that's the reason we do a lot of events. Like, like say, uh, I have few events lined up. Maybe I'll approach you later. But sure, the point sure. is how we create a different events for students. Okay. So it's just not creating brand. But what we are doing apart from others, the different from others, we are saying that we will give you a, you a conversion factor also. Okay. So let's say you need resources tomorrow. Yeah. You sponsor, then we get you resources too. Yeah. So it's like, let's say we take Atom. We, we might be creating activation campaigns in 30 villages. Sure, sure. So how students go door to door or do a campaign. And, and a yeah, lot of people right. have a presumption from our age group that a lot of students don't do such stuff. Today, what happened is like the doors, everyone is an engineer by chance, not by choice. Yeah. So most of them come from the different privileged communities or some people want to just have exposure for yeah. selling part of it. They are taking up our jobs. I've learned a lot from it. Thank uh, you. in this honor. particular conversation and, and that is really the purpose of... Now, it, it's uh, good to always interact with uh, different, uh, you know, the entrepreneurial yeah. from different sectors yeah. because it's always good to share the thoughts Absolutely. and uh, this is just a beginning where we start clicking off well and start knowing each other yes. and meet frequently. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I believe a lot in idea sharing and just like right. what you were mentioning. No, it's not always about advisory board and yeah. advisory equity, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's more than that sometimes. Absolutely. And uh, apart from that, I personally feel uh, coming from a family business background like yeah. you did, yeah. 
So sometimes coming out of shadow is the toughest part. <laughs> I, yeah. I know, you know, it's like it takes a heavy toll on of it. Of course. So, so one of the students in the recent talks, he said, you know, I wish my dad was Mukesh Ambani. Yeah. Then I said, you can't do anything except Geo. Or become a meme. Uh, any day. <laughs> so it's like, you know, maybe you know, sometimes you just get into some shell. Yeah. So sometimes when you, there's a challenge in everything. Absolutely. So how you take it and how you build an ecosystem where you help each other yeah. and collaborate, as you rightly said. Yeah. So how you create that framework and add value to each other. Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Charan. I think uh, it was a great session and I hope that people get inspired by listening to you and uh, hope that it, it helps them solve some problems that they are facing and uh, come up with better solutions for our future. Thanks, Vamshi, for having me and hope VAMCAS grows, reaches out to millions of uh, people and it helps each other. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.